What's going on there, guys? Good evening, Earthmaster here on the live stream. Friday, August 13th. That's Friday the 13th. That's right. Uh, 2021 today, about 8.40 p.m. West Coast time. And uh, nothing bad happened to me today. Overall, actually, it was a beautiful, awesome day. So it all depends on how you take the Friday the 13th. Um, you know, and just try to make it try to make it a good day. If you think about bad stuff, bad stuff's going to happen. But if you think about good, good stuff's going to happen. That's for sure. It's called the Law of Attraction. It's the secret. All right, moving on past that little uh, announcement there. Seen a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity south of the Philippines area. Um, looking at uh, quite a few 4s and 5s kicking up there. An upper 5.8 as well. Uh, within the last couple hours also some movement on the fairly shallow side south of the fiji islands along the uh the trench trench let's go ahead and check out a little bit of uh info on a different scale map the globe's an awesome feature but man do i love the flat earth model no doubt uh let's go back here to this one right here you can see the activity taking place uh, around the Philippines area, a little bit north uh, around the Manila region, the capital up there, and also some activity down south here. There's a shallow movement here into the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench area. Movement down uh, into the South Sandwich Islands continues with about 36 earthquakes uh, over the last 24 hours, bringing this total up to about 90 uh, fairly large earthquakes within the vicinity. Of course, if you see my update video a little bit later, they added an 8.1 magnitude earthquake into the mix. Only about three minutes following yesterday's 7.5 earthquake. Now, it took these seismologists a little while to figure out that there was indeed a much larger quake in that same region. Uh, the reason why is because sometimes seismic waves get covered up. I want to show you guys what I mean by covered up. Let's go back to the previous day here on the Yellowstone graphs. And we'll use this for an example here. Uh, this is right about the 7.5 uh, shadow of the seismic waves. P waves, S waves kicking through uh, the earth here on Yellowstone. And it looks like just a couple minutes afterwards, there was a much larger seismically active um, signature in the red right there. That was the 8.1 that struck. And, of course, all the, uh, the other waves kicking off there. So there was no doubt a lot of energy uh, being released here in this region yesterday. And uh, the, what is that, our third or fourth 8.0 earthquake We'll take a look at that here in just a minute. But I want to cover the activity that's still taking place over the last 24 hours. <clears throat> Quite a few fives still popping off here, folks. 6.3, the largest aftershock in the uh, sequence of quakes here. We're getting a little bit of migration down here to the south along the... Uh, um, well, you got the Sandwich Plate, the Scotia Plate over here, and the Antarctica Plate to the south. Still seeing a little bit of migration. The 8.0 was up around this area. Uh, 8.1 was around this region. And the 7.5 a little bit to the north. So uh, we're still seeing a lot of aftershock activity, which is typical for an 8.1 or a 7.5. But we're still getting a lot of migration here into the subduction zone. Uh, and still something to keep an eye on very closely uh, for possibly more movement. We'll see how that uh, see how that ramps up. I want to show you guys a map here. This goes back, well, about as... Well, actually, I think I set this at 19... Uh, let me see what I set this at here real quick. Modify search. This is 8.0 and above since 1800. But I guarantee you the records aren't back uh, to 1800. Uh, it only goes back to about 1900 or so. Uh, maybe not even that far with the USGS. So, what's going on here? We've had three 8.0 earthquakes and above this year. That's a tremendous amount because on average, if you look about 8.0 earthquakes or above, we're talking about maybe one, uh, may maybe if you're lucky, one every year, maybe one every other year. So here's the three 8.0 earthquakes that struck this year. Kermadec Islands, Alaska, 
and the South Sandwich Islands region, the third large earthquake to strike this year. The prior 8.0 earthquake was back in 2019 in Peru. So a little bit of time has passed uh, since an 8.0 has been uh, registered here uh, on Earth. Prior to that, you go back another year, uh, back in 2018 in Fiji, 8.2. I remember that earthquake, a very, very deep, large earthquake at 600 kilometers. Prior to that, you go back another year. See the yearly intervals, so to speak, 2015, 2014, 2013, 2013. There was two there back then. And it goes on and on. The year that uh, looks similar to what we're having right now is the year 2007 when they had four 8.0 and above earthquakes, including an 8.4 earthquake in the Indonesia area. So, yes, we are kind of above average for uh, these large earthquakes that's taken place, but the uh, majority of these, well, I think all of them have occurred in... Uh, subduction zones. Uh, those are capable of producing some of the larger earthquakes on Earth. So I think it's, uh, you know, there's definitely something going on, a lot of movement. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a nine pointer, 9.1. Everyone remembers that, right? The Japan earthquake, which created a major tsunami. How often do 9.0 earthquakes happen? Roughly. Uh, about 10, 15 years or so, it seems like we have a nine pointer. Let's go ahead and look at some of the specifics here. 2011, right? So it's been about 10 years since we've had a 9.0 or above earthquake. Let's go back and see how far. 2004. Okay, so that's kind of an interval of about seven years. And that's kind of, kind of, but if you look on average, it averages out to about 15 years or so. So seven years for the 9.1, we all remember that one too, created a major tsunami. Let's go back a little bit further, see what we got for uh, nine pointers here. We're going back. We're going way back, back into the 60s. We're going back to 1964. That's a tremendous dr uh, jump in the years of intervals. We've had some close ones, right? 8.7, 1965, and some other ones, but as far as 9.0, and above, we have to go back to 1964 um, to see that uh, earthquake there in the Alaska region. 9.2. 1964. So let's go back a little bit further. 9.5, the largest earthquake ever recorded uh, here, at least for mankind in our recent history. The 1960 Great Chilean earthquake, right? That was a big one. No doubt the biggest one so far. That one was only, uh, what do we got, four years or so. But the interval, if you look at from the 1964 earthquake to the 2004, that's quite a bit of time that we uh, we put in between those 9.0 earthquakes. So it seems like they come and go. But on average, we're looking at about 15 years if you take everything and mix it all together. Uh, but we do have periods where we have much shorter intervals. 1960, uh, let's see, there's the 1964. Let's go back a little bit further. There's that 9.0, 1952. Uh, so what do we got there? There was a lot, 1960 and 1952, not a whole lot of years there. Uh, keep going back here. A lot of eights, lots of eights, no doubt. Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, and then prior to that, we don't really see any other 9.0s, but they happen, folks. They definitely happen. And these are all the subduction zones where they've happened at. Look at the West Coast, though, man. Everyone knows about the Cascadia subduction zone. It's a mega thrust area when it comes to producing and building up quite a bit of stress, folks. It's a Cascadia fold and, and thrust belt. Pacific Northwest has not seen any, any significant seismic activity um, along this subduction zone since 1700, um, 321 years ago. So it's coming. It is coming. Um, <clears throat> also the Hikurangi uh, subduction zone, kind of an iffy one down here too. There's not a whole lot of historical records uh, in this region, but this area as well has not seen a whole lot of uh, uh, release of pressure in that area. 
And of course, there's other areas that, that are kind of, you know, waiting for the big one. But uh, the West Coast, Cascadia, man, it's just, it's non-existent, you know, I, and it's still accumulating stress. GPS and whatnot shows that it's still accumulating uh, quite a bit of stress in this area. So I figured I'd show you guys that just this little interesting scenario on the uh, 8.0 intervals. It's been active, yes. Three 8.0 or above earthquakes so far this year. And uh, we're only into August, so we'll see what happens the rest of the year. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks, for earthquake activity. A little bit of movement in the Ecuador area, just uh, you know, just off the coast, a little 5.0 uh, striking. A little bit of subduction zone earthquake. Ooh, what just happened there? Are we still live? Yes, we are. We're still live. That's kind of weird, USGS. Maybe the USGS is watching. They just don't want me accessing their uh, their info. Or maybe I messed it up. I don't know. Either way, that's kind of odd. Uh, a little bit of movement into the subduction zone. Um, wait a minute. Oh, there it is, a 4.7. 44 kilometers into the uh, Peru-Chile Trench, Ecuador Trench area. Moving up north here. A little bit of movement along the uh, Middle American Trench, Guatemala, and uh, south of El Salvador region. Some forest kicking off. Some deeper movement here as well. Let's go ahead and check out the west coast, see what's going on here. We've got the all-magnitudes map up. Still seeing some further movement at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And some deeper movement at that. 21 to 24 kilometers for this pair of uh, two pointers, 2.4. Uh, so, no doubt some movement taking place along that Cascadia uh, mega thrust zone. Pacific Northwest looking relatively quiet. There's some deeper movement up here. Um, I think that's going to have to do with the trimmer. Haven't seen the trimmer map yet, uh, but I'm guessing that's probably active in the north and the south. We'll see here in just a tad bit. Uh, Idaho looking kind of quiet. Uh, Yellowstone as well. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone map. The current Yellowstone map. Of course, that was from uh, yesterday. Um, and I'm not, not seeing a whole lot of activity at all in this map. Uh, no localized earthquakes. Maybe a small couple microquakes here in these little spikes. Uh, but overall, no doom and gloom, folks. Uh, let's see what else we got here. New Madrid fault system. And I've been reading up on that quite a bit. Uh, this area has been relatively quiet as well since the uh, early 1800s. Um, and... Uh, not a whole lot of GPS movement on this area uh, when it comes to stress accumulation, but it does happen. But a lot of folks are thinking that this might be like a, a dead fault zone, uh, that it could be no longer active and the regional stress is building up somewhere else. Uh, where? Who knows? But uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that being a dead fault. Uh, fault system out here because sometimes we still get some uh, microquakes and whatnot in this region and uh, you can see some of that activity there in the new Madrid fault area just a couple small microquakes so I don't believe in the dead fault uh, scenario uh, Texas get a little bit of movement out there around the Pecos Texas area no swarming really to report in Southern Cal typical movement along that major plate boundary up through the Ridgecrest area uh, and uh, into the Antelope Valley area looking all typical here uh, for earthquake activity. So movement around the 8.0 uh, earthquake that struck a little bit ago or a few days ago now. Maybe over a week ago. I just I keep losing track of time. It seems to happen as you get older. So still seeing some uh, earthquake activity aftershock sequences following that uh, large 8-pointer that struck well over a week ago. Uh, China seeing a little bit of movement also up here through the Iran area. Uh, but overall, most of the movement down here, folks, just still kicking up with a bunch of fives. A bunch of fives. I still think this is uh, fairly drawn out, even for um, even for an 8.0, uh, 8.1, and a 7.5. I think this aftershock sequence here is still extraordinarily extraordinary is the word I'm looking for I think it's awesome um, to study and look at but I think there's something else out here brewing folks so just be on guard we're still seeing a, a lot of earthquake activity even within the last hour you can see all these fives popping up there in the red circle 
Uh, let's go ahead and check out the <coughs> Tremor map here in the Pacific Northwest. Whoa, I was wrong. There's not a there's not a drop of Tremor. Not even a speck of Tremor out here along the Cascadia, unless it's not issued. Yesterday we seen a little bit of movement up here uh, around the northwest part of Washington. We seen, we saw. I got corrected on my 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 grammar in a comment. We seen, we saw. I I don't know. You know, it's just it is what it is. There's words in the encyclopedia that are just blows me away, which I don't use by the way. But seen, saw. I, you know, it's it's the same thing. We saw, we saw. This, this sounds like I don't know what. It just sounds odd to me. Okay, so anyway, there is no tremor taking place according to the PNSN.org network, uh, which monitors the tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone. That's non-existent uh, for today. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there um, and just be prepared. You know, I... I it's it's hard to say exactly what we're looking at as far as the the next move out here on on this uh, on this active planet that we live in, but uh, you know I would still be watching the uh, the South Sandwich Islands area uh, really closely. With all that movement there, it's pointing towards uh, potentially definitely something uh, uh, if not the same size uh, earthquake as 8.0 8.1 that struck yesterday. Uh, it's just there's way too much buildup and stress down there, it looks like, uh, for it to not happen. So we'll see. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe, and we will chat you guys another time. Have a good night, everyone. Peace.